We have a really exciting panel gathered together today. Uh, we're going to talk about the latest in immersive experiences, where we think this industry can go. Uh, it's an incredible collection of Panasonic employees and partners who are enabling these experiences. Uh, so let's introduce our panelists. Why don't we start with Ron Martin, the VP and Director of the Panasonic Hollywood Lab. Ron, great to have you. Glad to be here. Do uh, you want to tell us a little bit about the, the Hollywood Lab? Well, the, uh, the Hollywood Lab, PHL, as we call it, Panasonic Hollywood Lab, uh, was started uh, back in the early 90s as a bridge from technology into entertainment technologies, uh, principally around filmmaking and television production at the time. Uh, but we've over, always overlapped with the uh, uh, themed entertainment, the physical part of the entertainment industry as well. That's fantastic. Thank you. Next, we've got Hannah Kim, a projection and scenic designer in film, television, theater, and public art. Uh, hi, my name is Hannah Kim. Um, I design immersive video environments for uh, live performing arts and also um, public art installations. Well, it's great to have you here today. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we've also got Brian Allen, the EVP of Technology and Content at Illuminarium Experiences. Thank you very much. Happy to be here as well. Um, my name is Brian Allen, and I work for Illuminarium Experiences. We are a digitally delivered immersive entertainment venue. You know, uh, my job at Illuminarium is really to um, create this new format that we've envisioned, and we use technology, and we layer technology to really enable creators. We've also got Joseph Conover, Strategic Manager at Panasonic Themed Entertainment Solutions. Welcome, Joseph. Thank you very much. I truly appreciate everybody. And uh, it's wonderful to be here at the uh, Panasonic Themed Entertainment Solutions. We try to build a holistic uh, solution experience that may include uh, design, uh, procurement, financial solutions, uh, whatever that may be, whatever you may be thinking of uh, building uh, as far as the immersive experience. We're here to take that approach and see if we can put a package together that's uh, thoughtful enough to uh, partner with Panasonic. Wonderful. Well, that's actually a great transition. Um, to, we've got some, uh, you know, I've got a, a few questions. I'm just dying to, to, to get the answers from you guys. How you guys think that, that immersive entertainment has changed creative storytelling? I'll start off the group by uh, just sharing my experiences. Uh, certainly over this last uh, year, 14 months, um, uh, it's been a very interesting journey, and certainly the conversations uh, we've been having um, at Panasonic themed entertainment side is, is certainly uh, had a transition. Of course, safety was a big part of the discussion. How are we going to come out of this in a safe manner for those who are actually building and developing these experiences? Mm -hmm. Obviously, a big impact for those who already had something out there facing the public as, as how to respond to that and how to come out of this. Um, and still provide those experiences. What I noticed is so much more creativity. I think this last year has given people a moment to kind of pause and reflect and think out of the box. And the conversations um, that I've experienced were just some of the most creative over the last 10 years. Um, mm -hmm. So it's been a very interesting journey to, to hear these creatives speak about what could be when given that moment to pause and really give it some reflection and thought process as we all had this last year. Well, when, you know, when you're locked in your house, and you can't see anybody. You're reminded how wonderful it is to be immersed in things. You know, it, it was like yes. we were just chomping at the bit. <laughs> I think immersive storytelling has given a number of other dimensions to previous sort of mediums of storytelling. You know, we've gone from video and sound to there are no rules, there is no box. You can do whatever you want. And so I think more than it's changed immersive storytelling, uh, it's, a, it's changed immersive storytellers. And so it's allowed storytellers themselves to say, okay, get rid of all of your previously known rules. Uh, there's no frame that doesn't matter anymore. Um, what you can do with video is whatever you want. Uh, what you can do with audio is whatever you want and then layer things on top of that. Uh, do you want to make people smell something? Do you want to make people um, taste something? 
Um, are you shaking them? Are you uh, handing them an object to interact with? Um, is content reacting to a gesture or a movement? You're taking things out of the passive world and putting them in an interactive world and you're tying those to emotions. Um, so I think it's, it's actually unlocked uh, creative storytellers to uh, begin to scratch the surface. And I think that's what we're doing right now is we're scratching the surface of what we can actually do. And it's interesting, uh, the, the audience has evolved with this phenomenon. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they've come to expect a different kind of experience in that. It's no longer, uh, and Brian, you put it perfectly, it's no longer the point of view of the camera. It is the point of view of the guest, of the person who's coming into this environment uh, being able to see what they want to see, to explore what they want to explore, and having the ability to do that, uh, and that, that raises the challenge for the storytellers now. It, it raise, raises the, the mandate of the environment to respond to them, uh, and this is all a, a really good thing, uh, but it's, it, it's forcing the entire industry to reevaluate and to explore and find different solutions and different ways to communicate that, whether it's peer entertainment or education mm -hmm. or simply the ability to uh, explore an ancient world that we'd never really get to physically, but we can actually go there and take it in. And uh, that, that's just a remarkable development. And that's only in the last few years we've been able to do that. I, I think one of the most recent examples um, that I've seen is, um, you know, in Las Vegas, where, you know, we really strive to continue to develop and open things even during the pandemic. Um, you know, one of those being at the, the location known as Area 15, where you'll soon see the, the next location of uh, Illuminarium experiences out there. Also in that facility is the Meow Wolf uh, activation Omega Mart that came out recently. And, you know, having the chance to walk through that and share that experience, um, you know, with family, it's actually very interesting to see everyone and how they react in that immersive experience, because it's a little bit of something for everybody. Mm -hmm. So if you, you don't have the time and you just want to go through there and you want to graze the surface of that and, you know, have a, a little bit of a selfie moment and all those fun things we love to share socially, you know, that's certainly there for you. But if you want to do a deep, dive into that narrative, um, you know, you're going to spend some time in there. So what I love about that, it, it hits everybody um, and what those uh, interests are. So if you can do that and tell that story and provide, you know, somewhat of a superficial timeline, but also a deep dive immersive timeline uh, and storytelling, it, it's truly a great success. Joseph, God, I love you brought that up. You know, we call those, the, the, that, those different groupings, waders, swimmers, and divers, right? And the waders, they're going to come in, they might take the selfie, they'll buy a thing, you know, and then they're out, right? Yeah. The, the, the swimmers are going to explore around and they might, you know, really get into it. They're going to spend some time. And then the divers, you know, it might just be two or three or 5% but they're the ones who are going to just obsess over everything, right? Also, I think what's special about immersive experience, I, I think about this a lot like that, how to make it collective experience um, rather than like being a solo experience. Um, yeah. I think that's also like what I love about like, uh, you know, live entertainment and theater, like all of these like open point of view that like you are experiencing with uh, something with a collective mind, yet like all the individuals take something differently from it, yeah. uh, from a very different perspective. I, I love those communal experiences for the massive when you create these things. Uh, Hannah, you know, creating um, Sweetland, the opera, and having participated in that and sharing with that experience with her is just truly amazing. What Brian's creating here, these are really communal experiences that you can share with, with family and friends and strangers for that matter. Um, and it is completely different than what you find in like a VR setting per se. I'm not disparaging VR. I think there's a great place for it. Um, and there's certainly some amazing content being developed for that space, but you're really locked into the singularity uh, of that experience. Um, and it, it's tough to share that emotion. Whereas a truly immersive experience, when you can do that, um, you know, in a group setting, um, it, it's amazing when it comes to fruition. You know, one of the things that surprised me when it came to VR was if, if we were, if our bodies were all in the same place, so that we were all going into the headset at the same time, you know, and, and then 
if there was an audio, if there was shared audio so that I can actually look over and I can see your avatar, Joseph, and I'm like, oh, those are his mannerisms. I know that's Joseph and there's Hannah and I know that that's her. But then we all have a shared audio. That really binds the, the social experience, even though we're all in our own little headset. And you know, what's interesting about that, Brent, is, uh, you know, if we think about this idea of technology evolving and immersive experiences evolving, that's exactly where we want to go. Mm. We want to be able to tune it so that your individual experience actually becomes part of that collective. Mm. And, I, and I think that idea of uh, that, that those performances uh, kind of related uh, things that, that Hannah is so good at doing, those will become things that are, are the test ground for this idea of my emotional experience, my emotional reaction will get so close to yours mm. that we'll be able to share that together and, and build on that, uh, but still not, not violate the turf of, you know, I, I wanna go this direction, you wanna go to that direction, but ultimately we get there together. Mm. And uh, Ron, when you think about the technologies that help pull that off, what, 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 are the, what, what comes to mind? Well, you know, uh, obviously there's a visual aspect to, of it where, you know, what we would call augmented reality or ex extended reality, where I could still have my own point of view, but I engage on a level where your point of view becomes part of that formula. Uh, those technologies are in development now where we can have uh, that, that shared environment, but still have individual experience of it. Uh, the audio sharing, the tactile sharing that can go on. If I if I touch an object and say, "Oh, that's hot," and you touch it and it's hot too, mm -hmm. then you know we could be in different rooms and still touch the same object. Mm -hmm. uh, that goes way beyond the kind of things that are being developed now and experienced now, and that will pave the way for these. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, artificial intelligence will come into that. It will actually do. Uh, uh, predictive storytelling, which will be very interesting because my my prediction and your prediction may not be exactly the same, but we'll have the ability to blend them into a common storyline. Uh, th those are the things that we're watching very, very carefully as the industry uh, develops, uh, as tools come along and the, and the storytellers, the creatives, the performers that come into this are gonna en engage those kind of technologies and really bring them to maturity for the rest of us. You know, one thing for us that we, went back and forth on the beginning is we wanted it to be a communal at heart, a communal experience. And uh, one thing that I think really helped with that along with the technologies that Ron mentioned was this integration of architecture and technology. How, yeah. how do you first design the space and the canvas? And then how do you think about people moving through that space mm -hmm. in order to facilitate this canvas for the technology? Now, obviously we're a a projected experience. Uh, for a while, we, we said we were uh, a VR without the goggles because mm -hmm. we have this shared audio experience. We have this shared haptic experience. We have this, we have the ability for you, your friends, your family, your partner to kind of split off and kind of go into your own little nooks and crannies, experience a personal narrative, and then come back together in the end. Wow. to be able to uh, share that or invite someone over, hey, come look at this in this corner, mm. what's going on over here? And I think looking into the future, um, generative is going to take, uh, play a big role in, in our content development. You know, we're in the throes of, of just being able to, to, to take a tertiary look at what generative content can do um, in interaction. Um, and then as artificial intelligence and machine learning play a bigger role in decision making and how do you uh, tailor a reaction to one person rather than a group of people, um, that actually will have an effect on the entire narrative and the entire mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. Exciting times. It's truly exciting times. Really, it really is. Well, I mean, when you guys think about the trends that are, that, you know, other, other trends that excite you in this space, you know, what else is, what, what's, what's on the front lines? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, Ron, um, I want to hear. Uh, the, the, this idea of the blending of the media world into the physical world. So uh, here at Walt Disney World, you know, there's an attraction called Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. And it is the, the first time that you can actually go into an animated cartoon into the physical world, but it's media driven. 
Uh, and the cool thing about that is now physics don't apply because physics don't apply to the cartoon world. So you can engage with characters in a, in a way that you could never engage with them before. It is not just watching a performance on a flat screen. You're in their world um, and everything I, that, I, that world suggests. So if, so if we can take that and localize it, we can bring it to your city, town, neighborhood, ultimately maybe to your living room uh, and engage all the, all the tools of storytelling, all the emotional advantages of storytelling in that same physical blend. Mm. Not only do we just enhance entertainment in general, but then again, we start opening those doors to social interaction and social change that, mm. that we really want to get at, but mm. we don't really know how to get there yet. It's, it, it's a little too prohibitive. Yeah. It starts tearing down those barriers that are, that are just wonderful to think about what can happen and how we can make those connections where we just couldn't before. Mm. And the, the, the impact of that is amazing. And so, uh, you know, those, those are the things, again, from a technology standpoint that, you know, we're looking at them now, we're, we're developing some things that I think would be interesting. It's going to have business impact. It's going to have entertainment and retail, food and beverage impact, but it's going to have personal impact on a, on a just a wonderful, wonderful level. Gosh, you know, immersive entertainment right now is so, it is so focused on, on, on entertainment and play and fun and wow, you know, but, but as these tools get more distributed and more ruggedized, uh, you know, it's such a powerful opportunity for, for immersive to, to, you know, really push the boundaries. You make a, a good point there, speaking about technologies, as you've seen in VR, you know, I've had a recent experience, um, you know, working with uh, Brian as one of our technology partners as we do, um, we share emerging technologies with our partners that we do business with. Mm -hmm. So for that, I was lucky enough to bring out some new technologies. Um, first time in this country over to, uh, to Brian's lab in Atlanta to show him our high speed uh, projection mapping and tracking uh, abilities. Mm -hmm. So as you mentioned, the VR experience and have some sort of interactive experience, um, but not with the goggles per se. So where we're able to project an image at a very high frame rate and track an object. So for this instance, um, you know, Brian mentioned a, a thing. If you, you hold up an object, you can wave that object in front of the projection that we're providing. We'll have projection behind you to show some imagery on that. And then we can also hit that object itself at a very high frame rate. Wow. So as fast as a human moves or think of it as a, a table tennis match when we're tracking that ball and we're projecting flames coming off that ball or some experience coming off that, oh. um, mm -hmm. you know, think of the applications for that. And that's when I love to share Panasonic's emerging technology to our partners and the creatives like Hannah and, and Ron and, and Brian here to see what they would do with that and to watch their eyes light up and all of a sudden they see application they're like oh i could do this this and this it's truly exciting when we have that experience to bring out these new technologies and put them in the hands of those folks who really can create a, a truly immersive experience it was really quite eye opening um, you know to have having seen tracking before but then to see the imperceptible delay is another it's another leap um, leaps and bounds ahead of what, what other people are doing in that regard. And we mentioned trends in immersive. And one of my favorite trends is the fact that immersive uh, will has no boundaries and it will spill into every category. And we mentioned dining, we mentioned workout, we mentioned social change, we mentioned entertainment. It doesn't matter what your vertical is, um, immersive will come to you. And that is my favorite thing about it is we're so, we are such experiential creatures that no matter what the category of our life is, um, we want it to be immersive. We want an experience out of it. Everything from, you know, the um, immersive dining experiences that you can pay for now to the LEDs you can stick behind your TV and it'll color sample and make your wall light up. You know, there's every single, um, little inch forward that we create um, only makes our world more immersive. Um, but I love that it's, it's pervasive. Yeah. Well, you know, Brian, this is such a great uh, transition to my last question. Imagine it's five years from now. 
you know, what, what are the immersive experiences that we, 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 we might be able to, to get ourselves into? If you were to just, you know, kind of have your imagination cap on. This, this may not actually, I think it's like kind of overlapping with the previous question as well, but like, I'm not sure if it's a trend, but personally, like I, I am like really fascinated by the possibility. It's like actually like might be similar to what Ron mentioned, the fact that you can really blend something else on top of like existing reality. That's what I'm, I think, what I'm most interested in. In because I, I think about this a lot, like this um, race to like, uh, I think what I love about this, like this conversation we're having is like, we're really emphasizing the creative control. Mm. And um, on the similar notes, I think about like, what's replaceable and what's not replaceable. Mm. And I'm very interested in enhancing enhancing our humanity and reality rather than erasing it. Because I feel like when the when the focus becomes like too much into the only the tech without having like how that impacts our lives and how we use it, um, I feel like there's sometimes like a focus on erasure. Mm -hmm. And I think what's interesting to me about this like immersive technology and then especially like uh, being able to blend something over our history and over something that is like our life um is quite fascinating to me um and i give us an example i mean like i personally love projecting onto buildings yeah and even though it's not too obvious i try to capture like what was there before and think about like how did this building become about like what was there previously or like there were some art projects that were um kind of in that context that like it's not really about like criticizing or anything because we do evolve and then like we go move forward but i i love the fact that like with this overlaying images that we can make something like we we can like reflect on um so in like move like kind of like in five years like i i love that like where the augmented reality is developing as well like i'm very interested and fascinated to see like how we incorporate different devices and also like physical projection, like how to projection and like, um, I, I was also personally interested in like, how do I mix like, cause I do a lot of projection mapping, projection mapping onto a physical uh, object is already like a one, one layer, but on top of that, like how do AR incorporate on top of it? Like how do my device, personal device versus like this kind of big real world scale interact with each other? That kind wow, of Wow, you're right. I mean, you, you what the projection mapping that you're doing, you know, in any given location maps so perfectly to people wearing augmented reality headsets and getting the same result. Uh, yeah, that's, that's great. But it's a different type of experience, right? Like with your like smaller device, like how does your FOV changes? And like, if you have both of that on this at the same time, does that have different impact? That kind of things would be interesting to see. Very interesting. There, there's a lot of work being done on the idea of, of true holographic imaging, that emotional response, the immersion factor of entertainment, of storytelling, of education, everything around it will take on such a whole new level of meaning. Uh, and and the, the audience will respond. The guest will respond to that. They will engage with the technology, through the technology, with the world around them, with other people around them. And this is, you know, from a storytelling standpoint, this is where we want to be. It can still just be pure entertainment. It can be engagement on a level that the world's never seen before. And those, those are the things, as a technologist, like I say, those are the things that, that thrill me. I've, I've seen some very crude examples of this. It's very early in the stage of development, but just imagine that. And, and to your point, Brian, when you can see that, smell that and feel that, that's where we wanna be. Uh, well, you know, the amazing, the, 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 I just love that, Ron, because the, you know, I think about my little son who's 10 months old and, and he's, you know, that, that next generation is going to expect this stuff. You know, the tech they've been around from the moment that they were born, you know, has responded to them. And so I feel like it's going to be, you know, they're going to demand it. <laughs>
Yeah, exactly. You know, we, we used to joke that, that there was a whole generation of people that could never program their VCR. And that same generation now can drive sophisticated communications technologies in their hand, in their living room. And our children and our children's children are gonna grow up wanting more. Yeah. If I were to put my imagination cap on and and envision uh, immersive in the future, there's two things that I would get excited about um, in particular. One would be education Mm -hmm. and the the idea of where learning takes place, which has traditionally been a classroom or a school. Um, and it's the chalkboard and the teacher and the students, right? So throw that out the window. Um, how do you put students in an environment where they can see, feel, touch, learn, go visit the Roman Colosseum, mm. go experience the wars of the past, uh, and immerse yourself in that because that is the ultimate way to learn. Um, we're scratching the surface at Illuminarium. We have an educational curriculum where we actually invite schools into our projection theater in the mornings. And we are working with educational consultants to do actual curriculums. But in the future, how do you spatialize a textbook? How do you uh, create the theater of the mind, so to speak, um, That's number one. Number two, I think the idea of sharing memories is really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. So you have your iPhone and your photos pops up and says, hey, you have a memory from two years ago uh, from New York. Um, Here's these photos that you took and here's where it is on the map. Um, And I can show you that on my phone and say, hey, I was in New York two years ago uh, and here's my photo from that day. And it it was great and I can tell you about it. But how do I allow you to step into that memory? How do I capture that memory in, in, a, in a way that would allow you to experience that beyond just a flat surface? Um, those are two things that I think about um, that pop into my head. You know, we covered it. We covered a lot of great ground. Uh, you know, I think maybe we, uh, we, we end with if, if, if you each had a experience to recommend for, for, each, for, each, for each other and for our audiences. Um, Maybe we all we all throw out some some cool stuff, and it can't be your own thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll start, which is you know, uh, uh, Joseph, you'd mentioned it. I can't wait to get to Area 15. You know, that is hundreds of thousands of, of square feet in Las Vegas dedicated to interactive entertainment. Uh, I, I I really you know, there's there's such variety there. You know, you couldn't do it all, but very you know, in in one one go. Uh, so I can't wait to get out there and see the whole thing. You know, we're seeing some great things and, and certainly everybody here and, and what they're creating on the creative side is, is truly amazing. I have a true passion in the, the themed entertainment solutions group. You know, we always look forward how to bring out these turnkey solutions, uh, these visual solutions to our partners. So, you know, when you're looking to build these scenarios and you have that vision, um, you know, I love to be able to partner with those people and have a, a direct relationship throughout that process. We want to be trusted as a, an advisor in these scenarios. And if you're looking for someone to stand behind it, it certainly is rewarding when you help your partners actually achieve their goals. You know, I look forward to, to more and more of these discussions. Well, and, it, you know, I think there's never been a better time and it is, you know, coming out of COVID, people are going to want, you know, they're demanding immersive and they want it. And, and there's a real business there, you know, uh, I mean, and, and it, yeah. so that part just gets me so excited. Never and, been a better time. Just as an example, being out at, um, you know, the Area 15 location on a Tuesday at 1 p.m., seeing lines around the block, um, you know, sold out experiences already as they arise within minutes. Um, but that to me, when I couldn't find a parking spot at Area 15 on a Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon, I'm like, wow, this, you know, people are really looking forward to these shared communal experiences uh, for those who are bringing them to light. It's, it's truly appreciated as we all look to get back to some formal normalcy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brian, how about you? One of the last things I did um, pre-pandemic was um, visit Walt Disney World. And the experience that still stands out to me there is uh, uh, the Star Wars Galaxy Edge. Uh, they have the new ride, Rise of the Resistance, which um, 
is to me sort of like the pinnacle of using everything in the kitchen sink in one experience. Wow. Um, there are no rules. There's humans, there's projection, there's holograms. There is everything, uh, every trick in the book that I have known, um, they kind of threw that in there. And it was a beautifully chaotic and controlled experience. Um, and that as a Star Wars fan and, and just a, a, an immersive fan, they pulled off uh, very, very well. And uh, I highly recommend that one. I can't, I can't wait for the hotel too. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. uh, Hannah, what, any, uh, any closing thoughts? Um, one thing that comes to my mind that I did pre, like actually years back was a hopscotch. It was an opera by the industry um that was a awesome oh did you do it i did it and loved it Ma yeah un unbelievable yeah that was that was pretty impact for me too yeah. as well like um uh the way that just a different way of experiencing opera that really opened up my mind um that that's kind of like actually like the experience that made me really excited to work with the industry on the sweet land uh. um and in terms of like digital experience, also like there's this like little tiny, more of a workshoppy show uh, called Rich Kids, A History of Shopping Malls in Tehran that, that was on the under the radar at the public theater, which utilized the uh, Instagram feed with the live kind of feed that mm -hmm. they were doing in the show. Um, that, that was kind of interesting to like, this, just to see like, how do you use different devices that simultaneously to create immersive kind of experience in a very not immersive situation. Um, so looking forward to go out. So good, totally. Ron, take us home, a lot, a lot of closing thoughts. Wow, so, so, so many, but uh, you know, just listening to all of you, and there's so, so many things and in, in, in like-mindedness that we have, but you know, for me, the real joy of all of this is when you see the faces of the people that come out of these experiences. You know, I've had the privilege of being part of so many of them, even the ones you've mentioned. And uh, when, and, and I go right back to that quote from Steven Spielberg, you know, who, who taught me, the world should look different when you finish this story. And I want to be part of that kind of storytelling and I'm excited about the next generation. Some of them are, are you of the people that will create these kind of experiences that, that you know, Joe and I from the Panasonic side get to participate in and, and, and support you in doing, but you're the true master storytellers. Mm -hmm. And you know, Aristotle said that, that uh, art has to entertain as well as educate, and you're the ones that are doing that. And I just, you know, I'm just thrilled to be part of it. So I, I look forward to the next generation of people that come out of your experiences with our technologies and just say the world is better because of this. And that's what a great thing to be part of. Oh, what a beautiful way to, to end this. Thank you for that. And, and so inspiring. I, I, I can't wait to get out there and start making more stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you guys, I really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Hannah, it's so late for you. Thank you. Thank you a million times for staying up. Uh, and uh, it, it, this was really a lot of fun. Uh, and I can't wait to see you all in person in the incredible immersive experience sometime soon. Fantastic. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.